Hello everyone, so this time I would like to share a video on how to fix this type of simulation issue. It's a very common issue and usually it is caused by the imbalance between the rib and the neckline or imbalance between your patterns and the fabrics that you're using. From my experience working with clients' patterns, I can say that sometimes I can't get the fabric information and uh, you know you would think this simple t-shirt it's it's you know there shouldn't be any issue to simulate that in 3d but these relationships between neckline and rib they are created i think based on certain fabrics and not always different fabrics work with these patterns so you know sometimes you get this type of result and of course that's not something you can share with the client because they will 100 percent tell you to remove the wrinkle at least in my, my experience, that always happens. For me, the time is very important. Uh, I try to spend as less time as possible on whatever I'm creating. So I have gathered some approaches that work very quick and give very good result. However, if you do um, visualize garments that are produced in real life, be mindful about these tips because um, I do change the pattern, I do change the fabric physical properties and sometimes when you work with clients you have to communicate that that you know this is the result because I don't have the fabric data so how can I proceed can I edit the pattern can I edit the fabric properties and uh, usually they're fine with that because they just need the beautiful uh, visualization but you know sometimes it can be a case where you know don't touch my pattern don't touch my fabrics better be mindful but if you work only in 3d and you're not planning to produce this garment then of course you don't really have to think too much about it and all these tips that i'm showing can be applicable and uh, also this method is quite good for animation because even in animation it will hold this kind of nice shape at least as as, as far as i have tested it um, I can't guarantee because it really depends on, you know, your avatar, your fabrics that you're using and starting with and your patterns. So maybe uh, you can see some issues uh, happening, but uh, as far as I've seen, it works very nice. Because I think in other video, I've showed you how to get very clean look when you just freeze something and then strengthen for a little bit. And, you know, there's many tricks um, that you can use if you only do like a still image but uh, those tricks don't work if you do animation and so this is very animation friendly method okay so here i have just a t-shirt and um, i also created one example here and i put this uh, stripe fabric on because uh, i like to check how you know the prints might be distorted just because of like the tricks that i'm doing because sometimes maybe uh, the client will put a graphic or a print and you can see here that you know these lines are bending like this so maybe this is not really a good good look so i like to use um, this to see the result and also how the fabric is stretching whether the stretch is very obvious or you can't really see so it's fine okay anyway so fixing this type of problem you can do it two ways so one is only adjusting physical properties but then you will um, see some change in the neckline opening if you want to keep the same exact neckline opening i think it's very difficult to achieve that just by editing uh, physical properties you have to edit the pattern so first method is only adjusting physical property of the fabric the second method is editing the pattern and I will show you workflow how to quickly do it so you can save a lot of time. So first let's talk about the fabrics and this kind of uh, issues also depend quite a lot on the fabrics. I'm now using the cotton jersey so this is the knit cotton jersey from Close default library. I don't know maybe that's like the first fabric you would think of to use on a t-shirt but actually it's not a very good fabric to use on t-shirts because it doesn't have a lot of stretch in weft and warp higher the stretch values the less stretchy the fabric is the more wrinkles it will create lower the values the more stretchy the fabric is the easier uh, the wrinkles will be kind of ironed out just because the fabric gives in much easier so first thing that i would suggest not to use this fabric uh, a better fabric to use could be this knit cotton rayon jersey and i will add it here and then we can see what's the difference and as i'm starting to simulate you can see that the body is kind of giving in and you can easily pull on it and kind of already um, smooth out the wrinkles that you're seeing so this fabric i think is pretty nice because it has good stretch value quite low and also bending values are quite low so it creates like this fine nice wrinkle so if you want to create a t-shirt that has fine wrinkle i can recommend this fabric because it works quite well and I think also in animation it has that delicate feel of movement so I really like it actually okay and now we can check um, how the fabric looks if there is a lot of stretching happening 
So basically, there could be some stretching happening if we check the this map. What what was the name? I always forget. Strain map. So it shows how much the fabric is stretched. You can see like three percent, something like that. But it's not really it's it's not possible for your eye to really see a three percent difference in the stretch of your fabric. So I think it's totally fine. And even if you put any kind of print or, or graphic, I think there will be no issues with the stretching. Now let's check if you start with a fabric like cotton jersey and you totally want to keep wrinkle that it creates or maybe it's a, a little bit stiffer fabric and you don't want to touch anything else but uh, you want to get rid of these wrinkles. You can see as I changed to this fabric, it's climbing up again because it's not stretchy. Here you can just change the stretch values to, I would say 15 is pretty good. 15 is a good value in all directions and I don't touch anything here. Um, and just changing this can also help you smooth out this wrinkle without touching any other um, property or changing the fabric itself. And I know many start with the default fabric. So default fabric can also give you a great drape right away, but default fabric has quite high stretch left and warp values. So even with these values, you can see the, even though it's not that high, but you can already see some wrinkles here. So also here you can just change them to 15 or even 10. I wouldn't go so low because then of course the fabric will stretch even more and more and then it could be uh, quite difficult to handle in animation because one thing I've noticed that if you maybe create some unreasonable combination of stretch values and bend values, the fabric freaks out and looks very strange. So my recommendation would be to use the fabric that's already existing with, you know, the original values because I think that will give you more stable and good looking simulations and animations or just adjust the stretch values a little bit to around 15 should be fine. But try not to make something crazy, like put everything on zero or five and then have high bending values if that will not be a good time. Okay, and here with the original, uh, to compare with the original one, you can see that the, the neckline opening of course has changed just because um, also the rib shares the same fabric. Uh, so now the rib is stretched because the body is also pulling it down. The rib gives in more because of the fabric uh, physical property, so also be mindful uh, about that. Okay, now I will return a little bit. Okay, so we are back at the beginning point and I will show you the other method, how you can improve this kind of look by editing the pattern. So here I will start just by using the usual cotton jersey. So for both rib and body, I have the cotton jersey fabric here, which has the high stretch value. I just want to show you like step by step how it looks with these original fabrics that have high stretch value and then I can show you how to even further improve this look uh, with using different fabrics or adjusting the physical property. Okay, so now I will adjust the neckline pattern here because as you can see, yeah, there's a lot of wrinkle and that's mainly is because there's a lot of gathering happening. So this is very accurate representation of, you know, the relationship between the rib and the neckline. So how to do that? First, I will uh, deactivate the rib with pattern and sewing so that it does not affect the neckline simulation and I will let it simulate. And now I will try to match uh, the neckline with the line that the rib is creating here. You don't have to match 100%, but I think the closer you get, the less wrinkle you will get because there will be there won't be a lot of difference um, between the sewing lines. And then here we can change a little bit the the length of uh, the shoulder line. If that's okay with you, I will do four millimeter on both sides. Here I want to bring it up a little bit too. Let's see, two millimeter. And then here there's some gap I will try to close so it's closer, something like that. And then I have to fine tune the front. Okay, something like that. And now I activate the rib and let's see what happens. And you can see even with this kind of fabric, you can get already much better a result, but you can still see those wrinkles there is still some gathering happening so there is 2.6 centimeter difference still so of course it makes wrinkle 
So either you have to let the rib stretch a little bit to completely avoid this wrinkle, or you can also adjust the physical property of your fabric, or you can use some more uh, stretchy fabric up to you how you want to proceed. I will put this on um, 15. And you can see once I made the fabric more stretchy, of course the rib now has more power, so it is gathering a little bit more. So if you don't want that to happen, you can also give the rib a little bit less of a stretch value. And you can actually put it on the same level and see what happens. Sometimes it works, sometimes it stretches out too much. So in this case, I think it was fine to have the rib and the body having the same stretch value, um, but sometimes rib stretches too much, so you wanna put it a little bit higher so it still keeps that uh, stiffer shape that you want. And then here you go, almost no wrinkle. There, there will always be at least some wrinkle. You can go a little bit further with adjusting more the stretch values or, or adjusting more um, the neckline of the t-shirt to get like perfectly smooth, but I think it's already pretty good. So I will now check how it looks in the animation. Oh, and before you do animation, make sure you simulate everything with, um, I will go back to simulation with this fitting accurate fabric because that's the simulation mode that animation is using and um, this makes the whole simulation of your garment a little bit different there might be some slight differences between when you simulate with this and this so this is apparently the more accurate when it comes to representing the fabric physical properties once you do that you can check if everything is still okay or maybe you need to do some more adjustments and then you can do the animation otherwise if you don't do it you can get some surprises in your animation where your where your garments start to look start to look a little bit different okay now i will record it and here i wanted to mention something about the resolution of your garment of course when you work on low resolution so your particle distance is on 10 or even 20 you will not see those very fine wrinkles around the neckline and in order to see those wrinkles you you have to put your garment on particle distance 5 at least um, because sometimes they really don't show up when you work at particle distance 10 and then you think oh my god it looks great it's perfect and then you put it on high resolution and you know all these tiny issues the wrinkles are appearing and then you're like ah oh, it's not that great actually so at least in my workflow, I do change quite a lot from 10 to 5 and back just to make sure that I will not get any surprises when I put everything on high resolution. Okay, let's see how it looks. Very smooth. Yeah, I think it looks great. Well, anyway. I wanted to share these two tips because uh, yeah, they're such great time savers for me in my work and hopefully you find them useful as well and if you have any question or you need something to be um, clarified, please leave a comment. I will try to answer when I have time. Okay, thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye!